Nathan Simmons and I hate listening to this podcast. I got really big lungs. <laughs> and I'm Justin goes to Hollywood. No. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. Nathan and Molly, <laughs> how are you guys doing today? So anyway, today oh, okay, we are talking about Bodies, 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 released in 2022. Oh. A Gen Z whodunit directed by Helena Rayan. No fuck? cap. Slay, queen, <laughs> this movie be bussin', for real, for real. I'm on God's son. So Does anyone know where I can get a Xanax prescription? Okay, <laughs> this bit is done. I'm so glad we got the, the TikTok AI for the show today. She's a hard guest to get. Yeah. What a what a get. <laughs> that was hot. That was worse than it. What? I had a feeling. The fuck? Welcome <laughs> to Spooky Lightings. Just happened. We're back. The second uh second entry into our spooky linings. Boy. Man. Bodies, bodies, bodies. No, okay. First, for, first the fuck off. Mm -hmm. Why don't we ever start the podcast with a kiss? I know. Well, we do. It's just never on mic. So right. Well, a lot, a lot of people don't know is we get together, we have a little kissing session that lasts <laughs> quite some time. Yeah, 15 seconds at least. Yeah, and then we get on the bike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we had some listeners complain about the, you know, the mouth sounds mm -hmm. like, you know, some of our some of our listeners aren't into that ASMR shit. Mm -hmm. and so it's tough, right? It is tough. Then they shouldn't be listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I accidentally watched a movie called Body Oddy Oddy, which was like very different. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, Megan the Stallion. Yeah, yeah. Oh there. Okay. Speak, speaking of uh, mouth sounds, <laughs> Mally's getting his warm ups in. This is all good. I would, this is the whole episode. This is yeah. This is gold. <sighs> this is gold, right? <laughs> I'm laughing more now than I did watching the movie. Oh uh -oh. no! Oh boy! I mean, let me guess. First time watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get it. I, I get why people don't like this movie. You I, know, I I think it is. You guys off mic last week. I said I'm really excited to finally watch Bodies, 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 mm -hmm. and I think the response was it's fine. And yeah. I agree. It is aggressively fine. I've I've heard a couple people refer to this as Gen Z's version of Scream. Interesting. I don't know if I agree with that. Wouldn't go that far. Yeah, no. I don't know, but I I also can. Tr I can put my mindset to where I'd be like, yeah, I can see it. Uh, I mean, I, I think Scream 5 and 6 were this version. Mm, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's that's a good point. Yeah, no, this movie's fine. Like, they're, they're, they're still making them, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Mally, why why Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? This is your pick. Why this one? I don't know. Why not? Huh? That's always Mally's answer. Why not? <laughs> Mally's, Mally's, Mally's. God damn it. I, I don't know. On this rewatch, this is my second time seeing it. I did have more fun with it. Okay. I think it is a clever kind of whodunit where nobody done it. <laughs> I think that's probably the best aspect of it. Damn, mm -hmm. spoilers right off the bat. Right off the bat. <laughs> and I got to say, I love Rachel Sennett. I do too. I think without her, I don't enjoy this movie even a percentage <laughs> of how I enjoy it now. There are some really solid performances in this. I love, I, I wanted way more of Lee Pace. Yes. So much more Lee Pace. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah, I, I, I think... I'm squarely in the middle on this one. This is one that'll either grow or decrease uh, upon repeat viewings, but mm -hmm. there are th some things in here that I really liked uh, and some things here that I thought needed, like, you know, a little bit more time in the oven. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. This is unfortunate. We're now two episodes into our spooky lightnings and we're both like, they're they're good to great. Yes. But not not like excellent. Absolutely. Like, you know. But did, well, I mean, I guess the real question is, did, I mean, did this movie make either of you feel daddy as fuck? Uh, <laughs> That's what? That's my second note. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, man, I, I don't know. This, like, like I think Nathan summed it up perfectly. This movie's got a lot of good in it, but then a lot of parts I'm like, oh, okay, guys. Well, it, I mean, we'll get there. The, the big, the big confrontation scene towards the end oh. is where like 
all of the 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 buzzword dump happens, right? Yeah, it's where all the punch ups are. Yeah, and the I, I'm, dumbest reveals of all time. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But I I was like, I kept thinking, oh, I want more of this like sprinkled throughout the movie, right? Yeah, yeah. If if that's gonna be the point, it's such an aggressive movie. It is. Like a lot of the characters are. Very aggressive, uh-huh. which is why I think you need Lee Pace in there to really ground things and Maria Bakalava as well. Yeah. Like, without them, this movie is annoying. Sure. Very annoying. But that's our answer right there. Lee Pace is daddy as fuck. Absolutely. Ah. Super daddy. Yeah. <laughs> We've answered it. And I think that's the end of the season. I think it is. I think we can close up shop early. Mally loves it when I say daddy. I know. I know. It's his, it's his favorite thing. I just, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> mm. Well, if, if you don't know what daddy means, I can't imagine you hearing the word zaddy what you would do huh see yeah that's what i expected <laughs> you gotta keep up man you're getting old you're falling behind i should explain the show if you've never listened to it uh, no explain that word what the <laughs> fuck is that a drug zaddy's like a father who takes the kids to zaxby's mm-hmm. uh, it takes them to zaxby's. i don't like zaxby's some- uh-huh. C- can i talk i want to say one thing about zaxby's that has to be said right away okay because i had it today i don't like that for the kids meal, because mm-hmm. I get my kids to me sometimes, mm-hmm. that if you want to get them chicken fingers, it's called a kitty finger. Oh, Fuck. my God. I don't like that. I don't like ordering that at the drive-thru. <laughs> I hate being an adult man and asking for a Zach snack pack. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> I hate zucchini bread, so here we are. <laughs> yeah, zucchini bread, not a good look if you're in a horror movie. This, Halloween Ends. Oh, my it's, God, it's, uh, you're right. It's becoming the oranges of the Godfather. <laughs> Should have brought some of that chocolate soldier over. <laughs> what? <laughs> If you never listen to our show, uh, what we like to do on our show is watch movies such as Bodies, 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 or again, as I like to refer to it as Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. <laughs> and we like to find the silver lining in these movies that don't have happily ever after endings. And this movie, this movie ends with a button on it uh-huh. uh, that I was not expecting as someone who was not familiar with Connor O'Malley the first time I saw oh. this movie. And now that I am, yeah. boy, what a reveal that was. <laughs> I wish I didn't know that he was in the movie oh. because. <laughs> him walking in is like seeing Julian at the end of Halloween ends because like <laughs> I was just I was so stoked I forgot he was in this movie and like I said now that I'm familiar with him when he showed up I was like holy shit <laughs> this is a perfect perfect casting this movie's right in your cue zone mm-hmm. you know why he, he was late he was going out and hanging out with Frankenstein's girl so that's, that's right. why he was late showing up that's right Mally I feel, I'm so sorry you're feeling isolated in your old episode but maybe we could try ringing back in I haven't been listening for the past like 45 seconds what happened <laughs> I am am not surprised. I am not surprised. But let us talk about the making and release of Bodies, Bodies, Bodies before we dive into a full discussion on it. So as the uh, AI TikTok lady said there at the beginning of uh, the episode, this movie was released in 2022. Mm -hmm. The director was Helena Rain. Uh, The movie stars Amanda Steinberg, Maria Bakalava, Michala Harold, Chase Who Wonders, Rachel Sinnott, Lee Pace, Pete Davidson, and Connor O'Malley. Could not find a budget for this movie, <laughs> looked high and low, couldn't find one, but it did manage to gross $14 million worldwide. Mm. I can't imagine the movie costs much more or less than that to make. I feel like that's probably breaking even. Right. But who's to say? I'm also a sucker for any movie where the Wikipedia page has a controversy section. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. Um, and the movie currently sits at an 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. Damn. Damn. Yeah, 85 is too high, too high for this movie. But again, maybe that's just my millennial brain trying to watch this Gen C movie and just not really vibing with it on that level. I don't know. I feel like this was like a gentleman's B minus. Yeah, that's fair. A gentleman's B (laughs) minus. That's fair. It's also what I call my tits. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. Um, Yeah, so the controversy, I guess we could talk about before we get into the trailer. Right. I want to talk about this in line with something else that has been coming up recently on social media, mostly mm. on the tw- in the Twitter sphere. But oh god, the movie gets released, and in this, th- I can't remember her name. Does anyone have her name on hand? The the New York. Um, I have no idea what you're about to talk about. So okay, no. well this is this will be good. Oh, I'm pulling it up right now. Okay, so this movie comes out, and then this uh, this uh, reviewer at I want to say it's the New Yorker mm-hmm. puts out this review of the movie and says uh, it's 90 minutes of just cleavage. It's a walking advertisement for cleavage. Uh, Lena Wilson for New York Times. Thank yeah. you. There you go. And so, uh, one of the lead actresses, Sophie here, Amanda Stol- uh, Steinberg, sent her a DM 
saying maybe if your eyes weren't just focused on my tits, you would have enjoyed the movie better. Right. And so, <laughs> <laughs> right. So this writer puts out like puts out this video sh- showing the DMs and everything. And she's like, look, I've won awards for my review. I've worked hard to get where I have. I have no journalistic uh, education. I just write really well. And then it turns out she's a Nepo baby that got hired on because her dad is like, oh, I know up in the New part. York Times. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> And it, it just, it set a fire ablaze when this movie came out because this movie is not cleavage heavy. No, it's really I, not. Not at all. I, I knew about that issue before I watched the movie and mm-hmm. I was like, this for a movie, uh, look, I, for someone who's been reared on 80s and 90s slasher movies, exactly. the fact that this movie takes place in the pouring rain mm-hmm. and it doesn't look like I'm watching a wet t-shirt contest yeah. is kind of a statement to how well it was shot. The fact that no <laughs> one's wearing a white t-shirt in this movie in the right. pouring rain. But you're right. There is no nudity in this movie. Everyone is covered up. Fucking Rachel Sinna is in a one piece bathing suit, for God's sake. Right. Like, yeah. I don't know. It was just so wild. But then that I want to lead into real quick. Okay. A quick discussion because this is the dumbest shit that I think I've ever had to deal with on social media, which is the discourse about sex scenes in movies. Oh, man. Do we have time for this? <laughs> this, this movie features no sex scenes. Thank God. We don't even have to talk about it. But I just, I can't. I can't handle it. If you're not, I'm, I might burst a blood vessel talking about this. It's, but. it's just, it's an odd thing because this, one of the reasons it kicked off last year was there was a viral Twitter post where someone said, I always feel weird about sex scenes because the characters didn't consent to me seeing them. Right. <laughs> what? And I'm like, they're not real. <laughs> that makes them a fantasy cuck. I mean... <laughs> You bought the ticket, right? right. But it, it's just like the, the people are like, "Oh, I, I fast forward through the scenes, or like I'm embarrassed when they come on." I'm like, the, "You, you're not old enough to watch movies. You need to go back to cartoons." It's so <laughs> strange. And here's it's, here's this crazy hack that I can uh, recommend for anybody who's like closing your fucking eyes. Well, well that's that, what that's my hack. Would be. But who who's afraid of seeing a sex scene they didn't account for in a movie? Mm-hmm. Like people. That was the other thing was like I didn't expect uh, you know sex in Oppenheimer. And mm-hmm. I was like, like that wasn't talked about before the movie came out, but mm-hmm. also. Really cool little tidbit is the MPAA. Yep, yep. I don't know if you know this, but <laughs> has a rating system, <laughs> and they tell you exactly what's in the movie. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll tell you if there's slime in a movie. There, like there's even just have- yeah, there's even a website that will literally give you time codes mm-hmm. for movies. They're like, hey, just so you know, at this p- moment, there's going to be a sex scene. Yeah, Mr. Skin. Yes. We all have a Mr. Skin account. I <laughs> it's my homepage when I open Chrome. It's just <laughs> sure, huh? But is I will G- say, <laughs> I will say. I do side on one tiny little avenue of this this conversation, which okay. is exactly how this movie starts. And we will watch the trailer before we get to it, really. But opening on a hardcore making out and the mouth sounds, I, I, I don't know. I'm like, okay, I get it. They're in love. It doesn't need to go on for two fucking minutes. Yeah, I, I, I like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was not I was not prepared for just yeah, immediately yeah. very intimate moment. Like that felt more intimate than most sex scenes I've seen. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like more voyeuristic in a weird way. Yeah. The MPAA didn't say shit about that. <laughs> it felt like Gaspar No guest directed that one scene. I was like, boy, I could do without this. So yeah, I just wanted to get that out of the way real quick. <laughs> but I also I also really like that opening sequence having that kind of stolen moments feel because mm-hmm. you don't really have that isolation for them for the rest of the movie exactly yeah and I, again i didn't want to jump the gun too quickly but i just knew because that is in the the zeitgeist right now and sure. this movie is i wouldn't even say it's that sexy of a movie but it is it does have that kind of it's in that aura it's in that sphere so. well i mean it is it is from when lee pace enters to when he exits sure. yeah. so it's about the first 30 minutes of the movie it is a very sexy movie yeah because i mean for that 30 minutes you know i'm Oof. just fucking hard as a diamond <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's let's go back and review the trailer for bodies oh, bodies yeah. bodies and then we'll get really into it who wants to play bodies 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> rachel said it just scream in there that is so funny yeah She's fantastic. Incredible. I love her so much. Guys, I get so stressed out every time we play this. Someone always ends up crying. (laughs) So how do you play? Get used to music that sounds like that. Yep. TikTok music, as I like to call it. (laughs) Everyone else has 
us to avoid being killed? What is that? Xanax, you want one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend is dead. So if you could just like not escalate this situation, then I'm not escalating. You're holding the knife and you're moving your hands while you talk. <laughs> That's my favorite line in the movie. <laughs> she has my favorite for sure, but oh yeah, not that one. You're always gaslighting me. You fucking trigger me. You are so toxic. Relax, relax. You're silencing me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's so good. I can't believe you're making this about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good trailer. It is, but I can also 100% see why. I look like I, I fucked. <laughs> and that's the vibe I like to put out there. <laughs> I can totally see why that super cut of buzzwords yep. put people off from seeing this, though. Yeah, absolutely. I. Does it feel like, I mean, I know this movie is now a year old, but mm. does it feel like this movie is just a little too late to the game? I feel that way about pretty much any movie that tries to do this, right? Like, yeah, it's very dated now. I mean, there was, think about how many movies about the first couple moments of pandemic oh came out God. at the end of 2020 or beginning 2021. I know. Well, you can't, uh, you can't outdo the master, Steven Soderbergh, that makes the movie during the pandemic about the pandemic. Sure. So. <laughs> sure. But no, I totally agree. Or, or Rob. Bob Savage, who just says, everybody get on Zoom, we're making a horror flick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's, it is a movie for a specific generation, mm -hmm. and maybe they identify with it a little bit more than I do, but I think as a movie, yeah, it really dates itself with these specific things, but I mean, it is a good send-up of that kind of uh, personality of Gen Z in particular. Yeah, when it's focused on that, I just think it's a little unfocused. Like, At times it is, for sure. Yeah, when it when it goes into those like big arguments, I think there's some really interesting power dynamics mm -hmm. and... People not realizing when they're talking about themselves to someone yes. else. Yes. Which I think is fascinating. I like, I don't know. I think, I think you could make a whole movie out of the toxic masculine energy from Pete Davidson alone. Boy. <laughs> okay. So we talked about this off the air after we finished recording Exorcist 3 last week, mm -hmm. but I told you, Nathan, that there's one part of this movie that is truly just unbelievable that I oh. do not suspend my disbelief for. Sure. And it is that. Pete Davidson could bully Lee Pace because I just <laughs> no fucking way would that ever happen sure. in any world. Oh, see, <laughs> see, I think Lee Pace is so good at playing that scene in a way that's like, little boy, it I is. could destroy you, but I'm not going to get in a fight. The fact that he doesn't say a word after getting punched yeah. and he's just like, okay. But I <laughs> like, love I love that when he goes to go to bed, he's like, all right, kids. Yeah. <laughs> like He calls them kids. Yeah. I think it's very pointed. Lee yep. Pace and Rachel Sin are battling for MVP of the movie Absolutely. because when Lee Pace they come into the gym after Pete Davidson's dead mm -hmm. and he thinks they're still playing and starts howling like a wolf and chasing them around while they all are all terrified oh that's <laughs> he's so good in that scene it's so fucking funny it's so fucking funny god and I gotta say I'm not a Pete Davidson fan mm -hmm. uh, but I think he's pretty darn good in this so I don't think I get pete davidson is that <laughs> is that okay maybe, to say maybe that's more accurate no absolutely okay the world is the world has pete davidson fever i just don't i don't know if i get it he had a character on saturday night live whose whole deal was he was so checked out but also hot that women threw themselves at him and i'm like i, I mean i will say there are clearly women attracted to him and sure. i don't want to take away anything from that from him because who am i to say but i i just don't get the I just don't get the comedic connection to Pete Davidson. Like, no. I don't find him very... F I mean, he does have one of my favorite lines in this movie. Yeah? Which one? This is one who's like, you know, like, you saw me coming out of a 7-Eleven, you'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know why that's so funny to me. He does look like he hang out, He would hang out around 7-Elevens, but this character does not. This character's never been into a 7-Eleven. <laughs> But no, I just, I, I don't know. And again, I don't want to bully him either. And clearly the guy's successful, but like. I think it's a confidence thing, right? Well, like I guess. He's, he's a good writer. Yeah. Like he's, and he, I don't know. Like King of Staten Island. <laughs> Women love writers. <laughs> King of Staten Island, he's kind of the least funny aspect of that movie. And it's his movie. Sure. I mean, then again, you put yourself next to Bill Burr and it's kind of hard to be outshined <laughs> comedically. But I don't know. I just, 
I think he's fine in this movie. I, mm-hmm. His character is obviously despicable. but and disposable. And disposable. Yeah. How did you feel about that reveal, Nathan? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I, I laughed out loud. It oh, was, yeah, that's amazing. Ugh. It was really, really good. The first time you see it, if you don't know it's coming, boy, it's such a slap your knee moment. It is so fucking funny. Well, and it's the it's the wind up to it too. Mm-hmm. Like it's cu- it's it's on its way for like a full minute and a half, and I just kept laughing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you you knew as soon as the video started, you're like, oh, this is how he died. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is I was like, man, I the I think the last third of this movie handles its tone so well, but mm-hmm. like I think for the first. And maybe this is something that comes with a rewatch, but like the first half of this movie, I think my whole vibe was just sort of, okay, what are we, what's, what are we getting at? Like, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we doing here, guys? For a movie that's only 90 minutes, mm-hmm. like the scenes keep moving. It, for some reason, it still feels like there's a lot of shoegazing going on for some reason. Like it there feels, is, yeah. It feels slow in moments where it doesn't need to be and it's odd, but I guess let's, we, we can really get it beat by beat at this point. Mm-hmm. So. Did either of you realize when seeing this movie for the first time that B, our lead actress here, Mm -hmm. is Borad's daughter? In the second Borat movie. Did not realize <laughs> until the credits rolled. No. <laughs> I did only because someone told me. Right. It sh- she is a very versatile actress. I will She's say great. that. Also, <laughs> She's- Cosmo, the dog. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I thought she she's already had a very interesting career already. Like what a what a shift in tones and different things. But it should be noted, I have not seen Borat 2. Oh, okay. It's it's actually worth watching at least once, I think. I agree. That's what I've heard. Yeah. She's great in it. She's amazing in it. Exceeding committed. Yes, there's some moments in that movie that you cannot, just like the first one, you cannot believe they got on camera. Yeah. Especially for one Rudy Giuliani. I was boy. about to say, this this actress <laughs> more or less brought down Giuliani. Yes, <laughs> yes she did. <laughs> and we, we applaud a queen for that, by the way. Absolutely, we stand. <laughs> Um, so the movie starts and we find out that uh, Sophie and B, our lead characters here, are in a relationship. Mm-hmm. They're fairly new into a relationship and they are going to Pete Davidson's house uh, with a bunch of Sophie's friends for a hurricane party. Uh, what a privilege, by the way. Yes. Yep. That was definitely something I wrote down. I was like, oh, yeah, this a thing that won't ever affect you. <laughs> exactly. And if it does, you'll go to your other house. Mm-hmm. So it's OK. That's why Nathan didn't like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> B has never. I didn't m- dislike it. <laughs> B has never met this group of friends and. Sophie hasn't seen them in a long time. So they go to uh, to this house. They introduce themselves. And this is where we get introduced to all the cast of characters. There's Emma and uh, David, who are Pete Davidson. And I forget the actress's name, but they're, they're a couple. Mm-hmm. There's Rachel Sennett and Lee Pace, who are a newly-ish couple. There's Jordan, who is the aggressor of the group, <laughs> and Sophie's ex. And yeah, they're all just decided they're going to go meet up, have this party during the hurricane. They've got Coke and booze and all kinds of stuff. This is a nightmare and a half, yeah. right? Like yeah. being just like thrown into the deep end with your new girlfriend's friends who s- seem to hate each other. One of my first notes is nothing worse than getting to meet the partner's friend group for the first time. Yeah. Like it is anxious and it's it never goes smoothly. <laughs> and you're all going to be locked in a house together mm-hmm. all night. Where probably the power is going to go out right. at some point. That's a good idea. But at least, I feel like of all this, this group, I feel like Alice, Rachel Sennett, is at least trying, even though she is incredibly ditzy. Yeah. I think one of them calls them uh, calls her vapid at one point. I'm like, that is a perfect word to describe this character. <laughs> I, maybe the best introduction right here is Lee Pace, because when we get introduced to all these characters, they're all hanging out underwater in a pool, mm-hmm. and he's the last one to emerge and goes, ah, one, right? I got really big lungs. That's <laughs> 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 such a great intro. No, no. He, he says, I told you That's I have right. really big That's lungs. That's right. He was, he was bragging about it earlier. <laughs> he had already established that. That's true. And we got to point out one of the also the best reveals of the movie is Alice keeps referring to him as G.I. Joe, mm-hmm. saying that he's a vet and everything. He's got this go bag that they find later with a like a knife and a map in it. That's a great reveal we'll come to when we get there. But oh, yeah, important to establish all of these characters up front. But what I want to ask is this, this shot where they're all introduced, they're all hanging out underwater and it's very tranquil and peaceful. Mm-hmm. And then when they emerge, that's when like all the tension starts. But this movie does that kind of again later on with B and Sophie under the water. Oh, and yeah. I don't really know what the movie's trying to tell me with these underwater shots. Hmm. Like, did you guys have a theory? Because it's clearly in, like a stylistic choice of like making everything kind of serene. I, yeah. Yeah, dude. Water washes away all of your sins. <laughs> Read the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, which is <laughs> okay. Which is why B is absolved when she's pushed out into the hurricane. She mm. just gets rained on. Boy, the symbolism. She's <laughs> Noah. 
<laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> no, I, I I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't figure that out either. It just felt like, oh, we're full circle, but yeah. to what end? Like, yeah, full circle would be back in the woods, right? <laughs> They're full circle because they wanted to create shapes. Hey, there you go. <laughs> The the closest read I got to this that made any sort of sense was that they're all surface level, and as soon as they pop out of the surface, their real selves kind of show. Uh. You know what I mean? Like they're all incredibly toxic people, other than Lee Pace, I think. And then yeah, that's underwater. Everything's peaceful. Everything's just below the surface. That's the only thing I really got out of it. But I don't know. I feel like this very thinly veiled uh, interpretation. We should record an episode underwater and Ooh, see if it feels different. I like this idea. <laughs> 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 that's a dr- Drowning episode, I think. That's God. I that I do not want to die by drowning. I, that's genuinely like a recurring nightmare I have. <laughs> it's not the worst for me. Oh. It's terrifying, but it's not the worst for me. What's In fact, the worst? Wait, what's the worst? You know what? Next season, I'll put the movie on with the death that I fear the worst. How about that? Okay. And then we'll talk about when we get there because I'm going to save it. I need to know now. Is it Homeward Bound when the dog falls under the train? It is Homeward Bound when Shadow falls in the mud and you can't get out of the hole. That's my worst fear. Or is it Chance getting a porcupine to the face? Oh, uh, poor Michael J. Fox. I, I hate to say it, but I'm Pete Davidson also in this scenario. Like People are just like pulling shit off the walls mm-hmm. and grabbing my dad's champagne mm-hmm. and showing up uninvited and I'm not cool with it. I, the one part that I agree with Pete Davidson is when Sophie and B are making out in one of the rooms and he walks in and she goes, can you knock? He goes, no, it's my house. I'm like, <laughs> yes. amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they're all party. They pop the champagne. The hurricane starts. The the, the rain starts pouring down. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're all just drinking, doing lines of coke. Sophie and David have this conversation in the side room where it's, it's made apparent that Sophie has been to rehab a bunch and she's trying to get back in touch with her parents who have cut her off. And David and, their, and her have kind of this heart to heart of like, look, man, you got you. You're not ready. Yeah. Like things are not going well for you. You got to. Why are you even here? We didn't expect you to come. Right. You don't answer the group text messages. You know, is that how you guys feel when I show up to record because I never respond in the group chat? <laughs> 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 Mally shows up with a sword and a bottle of champagne and just and I'm triggered. Yeah, that's not <laughs> not, not true. Accurate. <laughs> There's a very large knife sitting next to me. <laughs> She says they're bad influences mm-hmm. and that you're you're making things worse for me because I'm re- in recovery. Yeah. But like, yeah, she's the one who showed up unannounced. Yeah, you volunteered to show up. Yeah, exactly. There's there's a lot of that going on where, where people want to throw anything that they've done wrong on everybody else. Mm-hmm. And I this scene is why I think Pete Davidson's pretty darn good in this movie yeah. because he has... He has that moment where he just looks at her for a second and he smiles and he says, why are you here? Yep. And it's the it's the most genuine that I think anyone speaks to another person in this. Yes. You? It's the the one and only time I think in this movie people are actually yeah, connecting. But also in this scene is one of the unintentionally funniest things I think Pete Davidson says, which is he's like, what do you think about Greg? Talking about Lee Pace. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, I think like I'm more attractive than that. And he's like, I look like I fuck. And I'm like, mm, sure, Pete. Like, I, I guess. We, the the <laughs> problem like, is, as America, we all know Pete Davidson fucks. Yes. That is true. Yeah. That is true. But also, <laughs> Lee Pace looks like he fucks. Yes. So. No, nah, he <laughs> looks know. like he makes love. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Lee Pace looks like he fucks at the drum circle. <laughs> 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 hmm. And that's the vibe he likes to put out there. Whole new meaning to bang in the skins. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my a God. phrase we all say. Yeah, that's a common vernacular right there. Um, oh, I'm in a band with electric drums. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You get our new album out right now. You can get it for free. Uh, they have this pregame before they start playing. I think I think I hurt Nathan with that one. That one was good. <laughs> it's it's this pregame where they're drink a shot, slap the person next to you. Yeah. Can we play? No. I, <laughs> no, we cannot. I'm not. Pl- I wrote down. I'm not playing any game that begins with slapping with violence. <laughs> I, I just assume Nathan's note is no. Mally, we're not playing. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. God, it, we could have. It would be a good time. It'd be good for <laughs> one know. round each. Like that's as far as it would go. All, like, no rings. <laughs> I feel like B's really good at this part, though, because she's the one who ate half a cake before finding out it was inedible, filled with weed. Yeah, she can't feel a goddamn thing. <laughs> 
But we talk about the fish out of water thing with in- getting introduced to the friend group for the first time. Now you got to punch one of them in the face as hard as you can. Uh-huh. Boy, and then when when she just gives him, like, Pete Davidson some love taps, and then he just sucker punches Lee Pace. Oh, boy. Which apparently he actually did. Yes. Like, Lee yeah. Pace told him, I want you to actually hit me. And yeah. I, I just, I feel like there's never any reason to do that in a movie. I... Yeah. Unless you're a bad actor, I don't know. But I don't like, know. Why would you like, do that? Well, here's the thing. I saw that, and then they said even the girls were all slapping each other for real, but they didn't use any of those takes because they said, quote, it didn't look real. Huh. What? I'm like, but they were really slapping. Like, yeah, like I watched a, be- a behind the scenes little interview thing with all the cast, and they're like, yeah, the, the takes they used are the fake slaps. They said the real slaps didn't look real. Huh. I'm like, okay. Huh. <laughs> I guess we've kind of all gotten used to the the language and like the sound of movies because like sure. silenced guns don't sound like that but we have all kind of got used to it right to the point where it's like if you put a real silence gun in there you're like that's not real yeah <laughs> right. you know what i mean so i guess it's the same thing with slaps i mean as someone who has slapped someone recently oh, oh boy. it doesn't go as hard as you- i i want a slap bet oh okay yeah Wait, <laughs> a slap bet. That's the thing we all do. You hit the skins. <laughs> yeah, the skins. <laughs> Wait, y'all don't y'all don't do slap bets? Uh, the best. Not recently. Yeah, oh, not, man. Like you'd recall. Maybe we call it something different. Like I would call this game werewolf, but they call it bodies, bodies, bodies. <laughs> and this is where, as they're all, like, I, have a, I have a slap bet that I won in like 2017 that I still. What have, is I, a slap bet? It's where if you win, depending on the rules that established, I bet you, you won't get slapped. No, it's like. <laughs> Like, so I won a slap bet in, like, 2017 about the outcome of a go-kart race. So if you win, you get to slap the other person? Yeah, but I won... The winner, I got five slaps to use over eternity. Hell yeah. And I've used four of them. (laughs) And even though I don't talk to the person, like the person I have the slap bet with, like he kind of fell off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. I still have his phone number. And still like once a year, I just like text him a picture of my hand. (laughs) (laughs) Molly, you're a villain. You're a super villain in your old life and on this show. Oh my God. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Mally would also think that the best way to wake someone up is putting a cold bottle on their dick. Yes, yes. If it works. It does. <laughs> Apparently, it always works. I want to say, before we get there, uh, so they're all like jamming out, and Sophie stops the music and says, who wants to play Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? And I hate this bit. It's, <laughs> it's the commitment that makes me laugh. I was going to say, it's not a good bit. It's just the recurring nature of it that makes it a good bit. That and the fact that it took me two or three times before I realized you weren't perfectly timing saying it all. <laughs> Along with, with the drop. I thought about doing that, but realized the technical <laughs> aspects of it make it nearly impossible. But uh-huh. I love that this, like the red herring in this movie, because it is a whodunit, mm-hmm. and Greg is the outsider here. And like, as he's asking, how do you play? The shot stays on Lee Pace as Sophie's explaining the rules. Yeah. And I think that's a great choice to really like get your uh, investment in that Greg's the killer. Yeah. It's a really good little touch. And then, for some reason, they don't immediately start playing. They go back to the slap game. I don't know why. Yeah, is that to warm them up for the game? I, I guess. I don't I think they're all just so fucking high that they're <laughs> like, yeah, fucking. <laughs> Maybe they forgot that they were going to play bodies, bodies, bodies. And went slap back me to up, it. Buttercup. But I love that, like, Rachel Sennett slaps Jordan. And then she goes, oh, my God, are you mad at me? Like, <laughs> I love her little throwaway lines. Yeah. So, And then she goes, ha, okay, and starts giggling. <laughs> Most of the best dialogue in this movie is background noise or like throwaway lines that are off camera. It's so fucking good. She she supposedly improvised like a great deal mm-hmm. of her dialogue too, which I love. A great line later on is a is a big one that they improvise that I'll mention when we get there. Okay. But I got a question. Did anyone get the full extent of the rules for this game? Because it doesn't make any sense to me when Rachel Senate later on tries to explain it. And maybe that's the joke. I mean, it just it seemed like it seemed like werewolf yeah. or mafia to me, but Right. But there were, yeah, there was a couple of extra bits, like, I didn't, I didn't quite understand the tag sort of <laughs> element of the story. Yeah. Or the, uh, I mean, I, I had fully forgotten that someone has the X in their pocket right. until it's a reveal later on. Well, the part that is confusing to me is later on, after 
Greg, David, and Emma are dead. Mm-hmm. Alice starts going, oh, they're dying in the order that they would have died in the game. I'm like, no, I, don't, I think that's the joke is that it's not. Right. It's <laughs> immediately disproven. And she's like, no, but like, listen, yeah. <laughs> which I kind of love. It's it's an anti-twist. So it's supposed to be like uh, like an anti-Final Destination. Yes. Like, no, no, really, they're not dying like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't stupid because I was like, I don't well, think that's true. <laughs> not about this. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was started wondering as they started like <laughs> as, as they started like looking around the house i'm like you couldn't really play bodies 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 in a single wide could you no like this is an elitist ass game yeah. for the rich we gotta we gotta <laughs> play it in a mansion got to yeah. you got to would you would you have been able to follow this better if this was just an adaptation of among us mm-hmm. and they were all in little costumes that would have made things a lot if somebody was hitting the button in the in the sure. cafeteria <laughs> yeah. calling a meeting mm-hmm. yeah. i'm surprised no one said anyone was sus at all in this whole fucking thing i was so glad i was waiting for it the whole time <laughs> i swear <laughs> i was like i'm turning it off when it happens and then I'll just have to tell the boys that I didn't finish. <laughs> <laughs> this is when they find Greg's body in the game. Uh, he does play dead for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, and you think the movie's about to start, but no, he wakes up. And then this, this again, I do not believe that Pete Davidson could bully Lee Pace in no. any scenario, but... You know, for whatever reason, uh, Greg tosses out this line of, oh, the the best offense is a good defense. Uh And then Pete Davidson tries bullying him by like, what does that mean? You keep saying it. What does it mean? He goes, you know. It made me (laughs) so angry Mm -hmm. because like, that's one of those phrases that I said the words that I mean. Mm -hmm. We have words for a reason. Right. (laughs) Like it literally, it it explains itself. It means what it means. It could not be any more clear. So when when he repeated himself, I was like, yes, that's my motherfucker right there. Like, Uh I love this guy. That's why, like, I don't think, like, David is actually, like... A successful bully? No. (laughs) Successfully bullying him. Mm -hmm. Because I think Greg's just like, I'm just going to keep my fucking mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. David is being so childish. Like, I'm just going to let it happen. Like, like, Greg's just trying to not start shit. See, I don't know. I think there's part of that in there, but I also think he's genuinely just that naive. Mm Because he plays off like he's kind of a goof there's the bit where he says gaslighting is a stupid term and then gaslights her yes. into like doubting what it means yes like, he's like fuck off that's a that, that's a dumb word you just heard that on twitter like he's not self-aware at all yeah and the whole thing with the best part about greg repeating himself is he's like he says it three times I he never it. changes up exactly what he means but then david's it slower for him yeah and then the girl's going like dave and he goes no this is a teaching moment i'm Ooh. like this is <laughs> pathetic this, that you think you are successfully bullying this man that could easily murder you <laughs> my <laughs> like, blood was like boiling at this point mm-hmm. yeah and then that leads to the fight with emma and yeah it's just i don't know I mean, it's it is a good portrayal that pete david's doing he is mm-hmm. doing a good job of playing this character but also i know so many people like this i know you know that it's just like especially when all these things that happen with celebrities and everything that they come out and then it turns out that this is what they're really like and mm-hmm. it's just like man it's just hard to laugh at stuff like this anymore you know what i mean yeah and then the fact that that's his girlfriend that he's doing and he's like shut up it's a dumb word you're an actress you're just fake crying oh and i'm God. like Gee, come on it, it is it's the most infuriating thing when when i was in college for for theater like that would be the quickest way someone would try to shut me down was they'd be like oh well you're there's nothing genuine about you yeah. right like look what you want to do you want to pretend for a living like i can't even take you seriously yeah i do love that how quickly this gets like his his uh the facade of this this toughness that he puts that like, gets broken down mm-hmm. when somebody says i think it's alex goes is that why you guys don't have sex <laughs> and david this is one of my favorite lines of the movie is and it gets a throwaway line that's like off camera but david goes are you talking about talking to your friends about me behind my back and emma goes no and you hear rachel saying it go yes <laughs> yes <laughs> So good. And then as Emma st- or David storms off because they all accuse him of being the murderer in the game. Uh-huh. And he like breaks a picture frame or something. You hear Rachel Sennett again going, relationships can be really complicated. <laughs> 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 She's the, again, without her, dude, I don't think this movie works. Like it's, it would just be nothing but like you would just be rooting for all these people to die immediately. She gives one of the best because everyone's dealing with the aftermath of these deaths. Mm-hmm. You know, in the reality of the movie, they're all still high as shit. Yeah, and they're drunk. Yeah, and she gives one of the best like I'm hungover and a murder has happened yes. performances I've ever seen. God, she's so fucking fun. And then they start going around the house playing the game again. And Greg says he's going to go upstairs and go to sleep because mm-hmm. he got punched by David and he doesn't want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And 
and then the bullying stuff. And so they play, start playing the game again, and then David is found actually dead um, from his throat slashed outside. Mm-hmm. They all start immediately accusing each other. Like, it's so quick how they all turn on one another. Yep. I love the scrambling in this scene. Yeah. And people, they keep yelling, someone, is it Emma, keeps yelling, hold his head up, yes. which is like such a shocked response because in reality like no that's not gonna do anything his head's yeah. not attached yeah. like it's there ain't much you can do for the man i mean it's it's still attached a just little a little bit, bit. <laughs> it's attached it's just not functioning basically and then immediately they all have they all get his blood all over their faces mm-hmm. bodies like, except for i think rachel sinnett she's even like don't touch him it's evidence have right. you watched svu right. or whatever oh yeah they, they said evidence of what she goes cause yeah <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. But then they, so they all start immediately like accusing one another. And then the conversation turns to Greg, Mm -hmm. who apparently Rachel Sennett and Lee Pace met on Tinder. Mm -hmm. And they've only been dating. She goes, How long have you guys been dating? Like a really long time. And it turns out it's like two weeks. Two (laughs) weeks. But he's a Libra moon. He's a Libra moon. (laughs) But. Jordan starts asking the real questions like you don't know this guy what's his what's his last name mm-hmm. what's his middle name and she goes you don't ask what the middle name is okay for a really long time it's weird yeah <laughs> god damn it every line of hers is fucking gold it's so good yeah. it's so good but uh they are like okay well let's go find Greg mm-hmm. and they go upstairs they don't find him in the bed but they do find his go bag that's got a knife and a map with the house and a big circle around it mm-hmm. and they're all like okay he's clearly a serial killer come to kill us <laughs> and they find him sleeping and just the fact that this place has a gymnasium in it yeah. god damn this place is fucking massive they they find him sleeping on the floor with a uh, sleep therapy mask on that looks like he's in the fucking purge <laughs> and they, they they wake him up and they're like we, you didn't hear any of the screaming why didn't you wake up he goes oh well, i had these yeah, headphones, headphones in. in and they're like that's ah, a good alibi hmm. but the best part is when they wake him up he just does a little what's up oh yeah <laughs> it's so, so good yeah like he's i think he's so good because he he's really playing that oh this is still part of the game like yeah. I, I i think that he's really believable in that yeah and he's like oh you guys are fucking with me you guys are still playing and he, that's what he does the werewolf how and chases them all around sure. it's so fucking funny and then he realizes that they're not playing because they all have uh weapons pointed at him mm-hmm. he disarms it's it's such an interesting character choice too because they disarm he disarms jordan who yeah. falls like a guy on the floor and he immediately goes oh my god are you all right yeah nope. and then b bashes him in the back of the head with a dumbbell and kills him this sequence to me is the genuinely like the first upsetting moment mm-hmm. yeah right yeah. like it's It's so tense. You feel... Because I I don't think I ever believed for a second that Greg was doing anything wrong. No. And maybe that's just because he's... Lee Pace is such a teddy bear in this movie. But, like... Uh, it, it like genuinely like upset me, especially like once everybody starts talking about it. B throws up at the mention that she killed him. Oh, like, it's so funny. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's so, so funny. upsetting. Well, th- they are doing a really good job of putting all these different red herrings on because mm-hmm. another thing we haven't mentioned is that David, Pete Davidson's character, had a black eye. Oh, right. And they're like, why do you have a black eye? And their other friend that hasn't been shown yet, Max, Max apparently the night before got really high on mushrooms confessed his love to Pete Davidson's girlfriend, Emma, Mm -hmm. and then him and Pete Davidson got into a fight, he punched him in the eye and then left. Yeah. And it's supposed to be coming back. So the whole time you're also thinking, could Max be the killer? He's got motive, you know? Like, this whole movie is just, like, Max is just out here catching strays. (laughs) (laughs) And he's, like, not even in the fucking movie. Well, and it's it's funny to me that, like, they they get into all of this, like, psych speak and, you know, therapy speak, basically. Like, when they're talking to each other about their feelings. And they're trying, they're trying to talk about their friendship, but these women all also continuously turn on each other over these shitty manipulative guys. Yes. I I think the thesis of this movie is just, I think Gen Z has the right mindset Mm -hmm. and the right attitude for a lot of things, not all, but a lot of, a lot of positive qualities in their, the way they look at life and everything. But I think also, and it's the problem with most generations is a lot of it is just talk. Right. A lot of it is armchair therapy and activism via keyboard you know these characters are all extremely well educated but they don't and wealthy exactly very wealthy they're they're also selfish and they don't care mm-hmm. the only person who seems to be able to think through all of that shit is b yes. who has a very different upbringing from the rest of them yes 
She is on the outs almost in every way you could be. She's an immigrant. Yeah. She is uh, poor. She doesn't know any of these people. She's taking care of her parents instead of having absentee parents who mm-hmm. give her whatever she needs. And I, that's why I wish I wish we had more of B in this. I mean, she's kind of just always on the outskirts. We don't really get a whole lot of her interior life, I feel like. Yeah, right? she's almost not even the main character. She's, she's an audience surrogate more than anything. And I yes. think maybe Sophie is the main character. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's definitely more of a more of an ensemble piece but i like yeah but i i do wish we got a little bit more of b's life absolutely and maybe this is now becoming like the new norm but she's also gay so you have to put that into that as well so absolutely yeah it is it is a fish out of water in as many ways as you can be i think but this is also where we get the great reveal where they're talking about oh we found this go bag and everything and rachel cynic goes you guys keep calling him a vet what are you talking (laughs) and she's like yeah he did he said he was in afghanistan which we forgot to mention that too she goes yeah, he's a veterinarian. He's a veterinarian's assistant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The specific there is so funny. And then one of my favorite lines of the movie, she goes, well, why do you call him G.I. Joe? And she goes, look, look at, at him. him. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's so fucking good. It's yeah. such a good reveal. It's There's so many good reveals like that throughout the movie. Um, Man, here's a question I have for you guys, too. Oh, God. We, we see it happen a lot, actually. Mm. I think at this moment is where Sophie finds, like, uh, the board game room and sifts through all the pieces and finds, like, this Coke Trying stash. To find the stash. Yeah. yeah. Are kids today still doing Coke? <laughs> I truly don't. As someone who's never done Coke, because I'm pretty sure... My heart murmur would have a real problem with same, it. <laughs> same. I, I just feel like Coke is more of an 80s thing and that the kids nowadays are just doing Xanax and Adderall, right? I don't know. I don't know. Should we watch Euphoria to find out? No, I think it's made a comeback. You think it's made a comeback? Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm not, I don't, I, again, I would not know. It just, it feels that because they're doing every drug almost noticeable. It's a man. They're, mm. they're doing edibles. They're snorting lines. They're, they're doing rails. They're fucking drinking gay, gray goose and gay goose. <laughs> and <laughs> yep. they're just, they're taking Xanax, like, like Tic Tacs. Yeah. It's just like, Jesus Christ. I, I can't relate. Oh, I mean, they're, I mean, they're, for a bit i mean heroin was back that's in a true big way. that's true and i guess i guess fentanyl but zucchini bread is slang for lsd oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes more sense yeah. because who likes zucchini bread <laughs> <laughs> apparently serial killers if you look at halloween ends too so that's right. well there you fucking go yeah it's a hurricane party we're gonna have a good time tonight <laughs> I will say, too, another reason that um, I just can't vibe with dialogue like this Mm. is I hate the word literally now. Sure. I just, I hate it. It means nothing. The fact that, you know, Merriam-Webster had to come out and change Mm -hmm. what the word literally means to accompany, like, vernacular and everyday, you know, conversation and language. (laughs) Exaggeration. And I get it. Words change meaning all the time. Yeah. Wait, what? (sighs) So, they have literally God changed the definition of literally to not mean literally yeah. <laughs> it can huh? mean figuratively w- wait which no, is a word what, we that- have by the way huh? yeah yeah they have they did the i fuck? know when did that happen uh, a couple years ago i'll i'll look up exactly and they were they they were eating too much zucchini bread apparently <laughs> I, I misspelled literally but i personally blame jason manzoukas <laughs> <laughs> look I, and i love him but like that i feel like that was like when it was really blowing up was when how did this get made like was making literally t-shirts that's true yeah, <laughs> yeah i guess podcasting probably did have a big impact on it but it is a word that now i hear and i'm like oh it's not literally at all no so yeah we have a word for that by the way everyone it's called figuratively this is blowing my fucking mind is it literally blowing your mind is your mind literally exploding within your skull right now are you literally starving right now (laughs) i that's the thing i I don't know (laughs) i mean now you can't know (laughs) so there you go that's your uh your grammar lesson for the day i guess so wait am i literally figuratively literally yeah i guess huh <laughs> i am hungry See, that's why i just that's why i just say fucking as, as an adjective <laughs> yeah I, it's like uh you know that there's a sentence that's buffalo 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 and that's a full complete sentence it's like yeah now literally figuratively literally Wait, huh oh, oh we can't get it we can't get into the weeds this much we gotta move on we gotta move on no fuck that explain all of this to me <laughs> i'm excited about the the grammar lesson mm-hmm. in the middle of the bodies 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 episode. yeah that's what you come to this podcast for right sure. to get grammar lessons absolutely <laughs> it's the only reason i showed up today <laughs> 
so they all turn on B mm-hmm. because she has actually killed someone in front of them. And Sophie's a terrible girlfriend because she lets them push B out into the hurricane. This is after we found Emma's body, right? Yeah, Emma, who they found just dead at the bottom of a set of stairs. They found her earlier. She had went and hid. Mm. After Sophie does some coke and then kisses her. Yep, that's true. And she goes, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted right now. Yeah. I literally do not want that right now. <laughs> but then Rachel, a little throwaway thing that you, you might forget is mm. Rachel Sennett then asked her, does she want Xanax? She goes, yes. And she probably would not have fell down the stairs and killed and killed herself if she wasn't on Xanax the whole time. If she hadn't taken a couple of different drugs. Yeah. yeah I, and I think it's really interesting because they, they have this whole scene where they tell Emma, you know, we really want to help you. Like, mm-hmm. let, let's everybody calm down. And then she... She storms out and none of them go after her. Yep. You know, it, it's a while before, you know, it's it again, it's like it's all talk, which I think is really interesting. Xanax and cocaine. I think kids are calling that an Arnold Palmer. <laughs> <these days. laughs> she they push B out into the rain in the, in the middle of this hurricane. I think that's actually called a Laura Palmer. Oh, <laughs> God damn nice. it. God damn it. They push her onto the hurricane and she manages to get back inside. I hate to tell y'all, but during a hurricane, those big French doors are not opening and closing that easy. <laughs> <laughs> this this is the weakest hurricane to maybe have ever existed. This uh, is like a, a light storm. This is a two? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just an afternoon in Florida. It exactly. No shit. Exactly. Right? Before she gets inside, she also goes out to the car. Yeah. That's kind of important. She gets in the car, she downs some Cheetos, and I know the first thing I do when I find strange underwear is I smell it. Well, that, <laughs> and I also also eat Cheetos with wet hands and I don't dry them off. <laughs> so we forgot to mention the reason they can't leave is yes, when at the beginning of the movie, B went back to the car to fix her makeup and left the visor down with the light on and that light apparently drained the car battery. Yeah, like how bad is your car battery? <laughs> I know. I don't think modern cars can even do that anymore. But when she goes back in, they try to start the car. They can't. It's dead. And then she takes refuge in the car during the, hur- during the part where she gets pushed out into the hurricane and she finds a pair of uh, underwear and it should be noted it's the bottoms that are yellow i believe mm-hmm. and then earlier on when they were searching for uh for emma she came across a yellow bra oh, and right. jordan said we're not looking for my bra right now dun, right. Dun, dun, so that'll come back into play later dun, 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 dun. as she comes back in she sees jordan out in the rain uh retrieve a gun from somewhere right and uh, when she get, manages to get back in they all start arguing and b says she's got a gun and empty your pockets. She empties her pockets. There is no gun. Uh, and then they start arguing a little bit more. And then Jordan's got a gun because Fuck. she definitely pulls one out. And they start having an argument. And this is, again, where some of the best dialogue for this movie comes. I also I truly love that because B explains, you know, my mom has borderline personality disorder. I've been mm-hmm. taking care of her. Mm-hmm. Rachel Sennett tells us I have body dysmorphia. Mm, this is this is the line, by the way. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's the line, by the way. Apparently, she told like the director overheard Rachel Sennett talking to the other cast behind the scenes mm-hmm. and was saying yeah i have body dysmorphia and she goes can we use that in the movie uh, and that was where they put it and that's one of the funniest fucking lines of the movie too <laughs> it's so because she's she so desperately needs to be part of the story well there's that and then she also the before she says that she says oh my god mental health is a very serious issue <laughs> and somebody i think it's jordan later on makes it it's it's the perfect synopsis of this character she says you always want to be the victim yes. you always want to be a part of the conversation and i feel like that's also kind of a good send-up of gen z which is they there is and not to dismiss any of it mm. that's genuine but there is this thing of like i have to be able to identify as some kind of problem right i have to be part of the conversation yes i'm bipolar or i'm depressed or i have body dysmorphia yeah. there's always something and again not to not validate those people that are but oh, like of course you can also just be fine yeah yeah. <laughs> well, and there's there's also the thing where it is it is really smart satire to have that there. But yes. I think I think it pushes it a little bit too far when she says, don't call her a psychopath. That's so ableist. And I'm yeah. like, are we really having this conversation during this confrontation? Yes. Yeah. Well, then they do that. And then Sophie has a cringe one later, too, which is like, oh, everybody else here can do drugs and get fucked up. But as soon as the black girl who's in recovery does it, oh, sure. it's a problem. And Rachel Sinek goes, look, I'm an ally. <laughs> <laughs> I think it. I think maybe it's uh, because of her delivery, but that line still worked. For it me. is so funny. It, no, it is. She has got the best lines of the movie. It is from a different like this scene is from a movie that had that kind of shit 
all through it. Yeah. You know what I mean? This like, is an SNL sketch at yes. this point. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess we should explain. Jordan now says, like, we can't trust B. She's not who she says she is. Mm-hmm. Earlier on, when they were introducing themselves, B said, oh, I went to Utah State and mm-hmm. I met Sophie there. And Jordan says, I looked it up. No one with your name ever graduated from Utah State. Right. And B says, look, I can explain. I did go to Utah State for one semester, but then my mom was sick and she has borderline. So I dropped out to take care of her. And we also found out that Sophie would take her to and from work at this place in the mall. And she goes, well, I also lost my job. And she goes, well, why? where were you doing the whole time? She goes, I would just go and hang out in the food court until you picked me up. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to disappoint you. And I'm like, this is, I could could cry right now from this character. I know. Jesus Christ, this poor girl. And then having to deal with this murder mystery on top of all this. Yeah, she deserved better. (laughs) And it's a good way to like clear her name for the most part. From this, I mean, we know she doesn't kill David. She finds David. Mm-hmm. So, but then they get into this further conversation. This is back and forth with all the quips and everything. And I think it's Sophie. He says, "Feelings are facts." And then Jordan goes, "No, facts are facts." <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "Yes, yes." This, again, this movie's got some great lines, but mm-hmm. you're right. This this scene feels a little overwritten, right? But not to say that these these girls really don't play off the dialogue very well. Like this feels genuine. Oh no, they're they're delivering it. Pretty great, yeah. And this is where we get. We did get, you have the, what the logline is for the podcast? I, I do, because I was going to say, I should have introduced our show as this <laughs> when we first started today. But they start talking you know, about how much they all secretly hate each other. Mm-hmm. And then Sophie says to Alice, Jordan hate listens to your podcast just to make fun of you about, like to make fun of it. And it's so funny because as the audience, I'm like, oh, I wonder what her podcast is about. Uh-huh. And then B just, there's a B and B goes, What's your podcast? <laughs> I love that. I do love it. And then Alice's response in this like hectic, fucking frantic voice. She goes, it's about hanging out with your smartest and funniest friend. <laughs> so it has nothing. It, it's nothing like this show. With this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is this is a line Alan from The Hangover would would say. Oh yeah, my God, that's exactly yeah. what he would say. <laughs> to me, like genuinely, I think the funniest part of this entire movie. <laughs> We're the three best friends that anyone could have. <laughs> Jordan. Jordan physically cannot keep herself from rolling her eyes yes. and sighing. Yeah. She does it twice, and it's so funny. Like, did you just sigh and roll your eyes? No. Yeah. No. Like that! <laughs> I think if they didn't do this, it was a missed opportunity, but they 1,000% should have had the character of Alice put out a companion podcast for like one episode. Oh my gosh. In character. Absolutely. Like that would have been perfect. That would have been amazing. Maybe they did, and I just didn't see it. I was getting tonal whiplash in this section of the movie, but it's my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, no, <laughs> I get that. I get that for sure. And then- Well, and that's not even- We get the other big reveal about Jordan right after. Oh, sure. <laughs> I was going to say because she says oh Alice you're always trying to play the victim and then Sophie goes well what about you she, she goes you know we're all rich and she goes well your parents are upper middle class oh yeah and it's like a bob shell that goes off you always go out about your rags to riches story but your parents are upper middle class <laughs> and she goes no they're not take that they back they are they teach at a university <laughs> they're yeah. professors and she goes a public university <laughs> <laughs> it's public it's it is a great scene it but is. this this is the the like if you had to like pull one scene for this movie to describe what it's about this mm-hmm. is it like, yeah it's 100 percent this absolutely the 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 casual classism and one-upsmanship that mm-hmm. they don't even acknowledge mm-hmm. until they they have to help each other and won't <laughs> yes and then that's when jordan does pull out a gun and sh- again this is how great this character is. She shoots Alice in the leg and she goes, did you just shoot me? No. And Jordan, while she's holding a gun, pointing at her, goes, no. I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't shoot you. <laughs> yeah, she goes, I didn't shoot you. And she goes, you did. It hurts a lot. <laughs> I've, never I've never been, been shot, shot before. before. <laughs> And then I love that the character of Alice, even after getting shot, cannot compose herself enough. She immediately starts going, well, give me the gun. Why'd you shoot me? It starts going towards the gunmen. Yes. And tries to, to wrestle it away from her. And then that's when the whole group gangs up and you already know what's coming. But uh, they end up accidentally shooting uh, Alice under the chin and killing her. Uh. Yeah. So the two best characters of this movie are gone. They're out. And uh luckily we're right here at, towards the end though. We're wrap we're in the we're in the climax of it. They start, you know, uh going back and forth in this house with Jordan's gotten having the gun. Eventually, uh B 
gets the upper hand on her and flips her over the balcony. And I so wanted Jordan to bounce off this floor like that kid in Halloween ends. <laughs> I so wanted that. She, yeah, she go she goes over that fucking railing. She really does. But we forgot to mention Jesus Christ. We forgot to mention the big bombshell mm-hmm. when they're arguing. Jordan uh, tells. B, did Sophie tell you that we had sex, like, yesterday? Mm -hmm. And she's like, what are you talking about? She goes, check her text. And Sophie immediately starts denying, and she goes, trying to get in your head, don't listen to her. But I think B's already put it together with the underwear she found. Mm -hmm. And as they push Jordan over, her dying words are, check her text. Yeah. (laughs) Which is, again, I feel like that's very scream oh, very yeah. Yeah. Williamson. like even in their dying breath she's sticking to it yeah but i do have a question sure. when when were they supposed to have hooked up right i was wondering about that too so it's before they even go to the house then right, right. yes yeah i think what it was was sophie got out of rehab and maybe jordan picked her up yeah maybe but I don't know, because Jordan is also genuinely surprised when Sophie and B show up for the hurricane party. So, I guess she had no intentions of seeing her either. Right. So, that's the only thing I can think of. And they probably mentioned it in dialogue and I just missed it. But So, now that B and Sophie are the only ones left, B thinks that Sophie killed everyone. And mm-hmm. Sophie thinks that B killed everyone. So, they're kind of playing this cat and mouse throughout the house. But now B's got a gun because she takes the gun <laughs> from Damn Jordan. It. And they end up outside and Sophie like <laughs> sneak attack hugs her from behind and mm-hmm. she's like trying to like comfort her like, no, I promise you it's everything's okay. <laughs> attack hug. Mm-hmm. And they spot a cell phone that they both think is Sophie's cell phone and they meet instead of going for the gun that ends up getting knocked out of B's hand. They both go for the phone. Right. Because what's more important? Right. I feel like, though, at this point, though, if Sophie is this adamant that you don't check your phone, she's guilty. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. But they, they, they tackle each other for the phone. They end up in the pool. And then when they end up out, like they both get out of the pool and they realize, oh, this isn't even Sophie's phone. It's not B's phone either. They don't know whose phone it is, but then they realize it's David's. Right. And so to get it open, because they need the password, they use face ID and they just open up David's dead eyes on the ground. <laughs> yep, that was wild. And this is where we get probably the best scene of the movie for me, or at least the best reveal. Yes. Which is who killed David. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. And- Earlier in the movie, when they're all talking about, all right, let's get this party started. Let's pop the champagne. Lee Pace has a ball of champagne. And I forgot what the term is for this, Mm -hmm. but he uses a sword to decork the champagne to pop the bottle Uh like a machete, basically. Yeah. He like flicks it up against the cork with with the sword and it pops. And they were making TikTok dances earlier throughout the movie and everything. And so they <laughs> open David's phone and it's on TikTok of a video that I so wish he would have been able to post. Oh. And he wasn't just in the middle of making. But he's in the middle of making this TikTok video where he's trying to do the same thing with the sword and pop a champagne bottle. And in his attempts, he slices his own throat <laughs> and it's on camera. <laughs> and it goes on so long. He it's like comically. He tries three different angles. <laughs> mm-hmm. He almost like slips on his own blood like that would have made it <laughs> top tier yeah. like fell yeah but it's it's fantastic it's the really fact good that there was no killer that they all killed each other out of paranoia it's just it's it's a great great ending i think the original like script before it was rewritten by the director mm-hmm. like there was like an actual killer there was the, yeah yes, the, there was. and then they just were like what if there isn't one yeah and i was like that's fun that's it's genius. so brilliant it's, genius. it's so fucking funny the original screen play i think the i mean they had different names but alice was essentially the killer yeah. in, in the original screenplay no this this is perfect because it is apparent it ties in with the themes better i think it does and it also it makes the earlier reveal of him being dead funnier because yes. his reaction is to run into the window twice uh-huh. to try to get help yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> no i i think it, it ties in with the theme perfectly of like I don't want to bring up cancel culture because it's so fucking boring to talk about. Uh But there is something in this of like pointing fingers immediately. Yeah. And then having fingers pointed right back at you. Oh, yeah. You need a villain immediately. Yes. You you immediately want to put all the blame on the one person because it's easy then. Right. It's easy to be done with it then. And then when those allegations turn back on you, how earth shattering it is. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I I feel like there is a a great movie in here. And right now as it stands, it's just okay. It's just good. Yeah. It could be great. Yeah. So 
Maybe they needed like a Kevin Williamson to come in and kind of like do like a punch up on things. But I also do appreciate the very feminine tone of this movie because mm-hmm. it is like a female director, a female writer, you know, like I, I appreciate that aspect of it too because it is different. Oh, yeah. I just wish this movie maybe came out a year or two earlier where like this kind of stuff was a lot more prevalent. Mm-hmm. Like it does feel just a tad bit late, a tad bit dated at this point. It, it feels like a reaction to season one of Euphoria. There instead you of go. like a world uh-huh. where. Where that show is like in the middle of its run. There you go. But be that as it may, it's still like a very enjoyable movie. Mm-hmm. And then the the button on the end of the movie, <laughs> we get the reveal of Max. Max shows up. Connor O'Malley stepping in and sees the dead body of David, sees the two girls rolled around, sees like the broken, everything's destroyed. Uh-huh. And he's like, what happened? <laughs> and right at that moment, they get powered back. B gets reception on her phone and starts getting all these messages. And the last side of the movie is just a kind of catatonic B looking at Max going, I have reception. <laughs> 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 and then, yeah, cut to credits. It's... It's a fun movie, but man, I just wish there was just like another rewrite. I had a good, I've seen, this is my second watch of this movie. Mm-hmm. I saw it in theaters and I rewatched it this morning and I, I had a good time both times. Yeah. yeah. Like it's not a perfect movie, but it was, I, I had fun. I had a better time this on this watch. I really appreciated Rachel Sennett more. Mm-hmm. The nuances of some of the reveals and like the little red herrings and stuff was a lot better. But Nathan, I know you said you felt fine about it, but now that we're here at the credits, any, any closing thoughts on it? Yeah, I think uh, I, I, very much like you said, I think it's a movie that has its really great points and really bright moments. Mm-hmm. I wish that it kind of held together a little bit better for me sure. or that... And, and I think the satire is really strong and really smart, but I, I wish that there was more of it, sure. you know, kind of throughout. But maybe that's the point. Maybe we're supposed to kind of see these, the facades that they put up and then, you know, have it kind of laid bare at the end, which is, which is very fun. Yeah. This is, I think, a movie that didn't 100% work for me. And, and I didn't laugh as much as I kind of hoped I would. Sure. But I think it will probably reward a second viewing. I think so. Well, you know, Nathan, you might just not be ready for it yet, but your kids are going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's possibly true. With that, why don't we talk about Prop Cop? And for those who are tuning into the show for the first time, Prop Cop is a segment here we have on the show where we look at the props of the movie of the week, in this case, that movie being Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. And we pick one prop each for ourselves. And prop is kind of a vague term. It could be anything physical. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mally, this is your pick of the week. Why don't you tell me what prop you want from Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? Lee Pace's go bag. Nice. That's a great. You got a lot. You got a lot for a little there. Oh, yeah. It's a good choice. Nathan? You know, I felt bad. I'm not a big zucchini bread guy, but I felt <laughs> I felt bad for B that nobody even tried it. So, you know what? I'll take the zucchini bread. Fair. So, well, here's the thing. I thought on this rewatch when she's like, oh, I brought zucchini bread. Mm-hmm. I thought later when they show her eating something that that was the zucchini bread. Oh, sure. But it's not because I wrote in my notes. I was like, man, there's nothing worse than bringing a dessert to a to a party. and You're the only one eating it. Well, there is. <laughs> there's also a weird thing this movie does where they it does like the camera will linger on something so that I know it'll come back later. Like yeah. it does it, it, it goes to that trick a lot. Yeah. And I kept waiting for the zucchini bread to come back because we got <laughs> a couple hero shots for it. I was honestly hoping that's like how Jordan finally got killed. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just beat to death with the zucchini bread pan. <laughs> sure. I, uh, I want this uh, painting that I'm assuming is of uh, David's dad. That he has about the fireplace. Oh my god, it rules. It looks like if Paul Mescal and Pedro Pescal morphed <laughs> and put on a sweater vest. Like, it's a great painting. I wish they, I don't know, maybe that could have been a cameo as like when they're painting across like family photos. Mm-hmm. They could have put like a celebrity in there. That would have been great. But I, I like this painting. It's like if Uncle Rico was ripped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see it. I'm surprised no one just picked the house. I was really expecting Mally to be like, I, t- I want the whole house. I did too. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's a lot of upkeep. Your real estate ventures, yeah, are, are coming to a close, I think. Well, what the fuck am I going to do with a house in upstate New York? <laughs> there you go. Do we want to do Bit Park? Because I don't think we physically can. Uh, I don't have one. I you don't, don't have okay. one either. Yeah. The only thing I think there is, is the newscasters. <laughs> right. No, I got one. Mm. I'll be one of the people texting B at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, they're, they're all so excited about this hurricane party, but yeah. then like as soon as they walk past the TV talking about the incoming hurricane, they're like, I'll oh, turn this off. This is so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's a good little line. There was a really interesting moment early on where Sophie says something to the effect of like, you know, I'm terrible at texting mm-hmm. and we've just seen her texting up a storm. And yep, I, yep. I just love that little side eye that B gives her. Yep. Yep. Okay, fellas, let's talk about uh, the reason for the season. Mm-hmm. The silver lining for... Bodies, bodies, bodies. God damn it. I'm putting putting the soundboard to work today. You really are. Who wants to go first? Um, I'll go. Yeah, go ahead. Max got to tell Emma his true feelings. Oh, boy. Yeah? Too bad she's dead. Right. But, <laughs> but he got to speak his truth. And you know what? That That's worth something. And he avoided all this, too. He let's did. not forget. True. True. Mally? Uh, that hurricane didn't do shit. Yeah, it really didn't. What a what a non hurricane yeah. this hurricane was. It was like the L A hurricane we had a few weeks back. Yeah, sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. My power went out once. Yeah, like while I was like going to sleep, and it came back on like an hour later. That's the best kind of experience you can have with a hurricane. I think not. Not to brag, Nathan. But <laughs> you know. Jesus Christ. No, I, I I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> My silver lining is that uh, Jordan got what she fucking deserved. Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Yeah, what a terrible character. Um, what was that? What was that? Was that thunder or? I didn't have a gunshot, so I fit our, I'd go with an explosion. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm so high. I'm so high. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. <laughs> That's what most of these characters were saying down throughout the movie, too. Yeah. We forgot to do this, fellas, and I'm so disappointed mm. that we didn't do it in Exorcist 3, but that's okay, because I guess a lot of those deaths were off screen, but oh, best, best kill. kill. Oh. It's got to be David, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't, I, there's no dispute for me. Yeah. I'll tell you, yeah, because I mean, Emma just like gets staircased. Mm-hmm. Staircased off screen. <laughs> Rachel gets shot. Which apparently those stairs were made of diamonds. <laughs> because there's so much blood all there the way really down is. that staircase. It's like the staircase from the staircase. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be a reference to the staircase. Isn't yeah. It is. Okay. I saw that. Yeah, I read that online. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think it's David, mm-hmm. for sure. Oh, hands down. All right, well, if you're new to the show, one thing we like to do is, if the movie of the week is just too much of a downer at the ending for you, <laughs> which I don't know if this movie really is, but then again, and it does end on uh, everybody pretty much being fucking dead, sure. what is a movie that works well as a double feature, a good pairing for Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? Um, I'll go ahead and give you mine. A movie I saw earlier this year that I think is one of the best movies of the year for me. I, it was so fucking funny and so fresh that I just, I, I have to recommend it to everybody with an earshot uh, i think you should see the blackening oh, oh yeah. i actually really want to see that me too it's another horror comedy set in a house with an unknown killer mm-hmm. stalking the protagonist and it also has some very biting satire and uh it is so fucking funny <laughs> it's definitely my top 10 of the year so far so if you haven't seen the blackening you should check it out uh, Mally, what is your pick me up? I actually have two. Nice. Okay. Um, the first one, um, it's another kind of who done it little flick, and I just I just watched it recently. It's not the greatest movie, but it has some funny bits. Werewolves Within. Oh, yeah. Yes, that was a fun one. That's uh, that's the one with Sam Richardson, right? Yeah, been on a big Sam Richardson kick lately. Uh, my other one, um, it's another film. It has a character that basically only. Sp- speaks in Gen Z terms, so I didn't understand half the shit he said. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be honest, 100%, it is a shameless self-plug, because I did work on this movie last year. Hmm. Theater Camp, oh. now streaming on Hulu. Oh, yes. Yeah, I want to see that. Definitely need to see that. Has anyone seen Bottoms, by the way, with Rachel Sennett? No, no I want to. Uh, I want to as well. I do too. And uh, I cannot pronounce her name, but A.O. from The Bear. I can't Beer, pronounce her yeah. Ebony- She's yeah. also in Theater Camp. Uh, that's why I want to see it. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, they're having they're both having stellar runs. Oh yeah, so. oh, yeah. they're having a having a great year or two. Ao crushing it in the Ninja Turtles movie. Oh, yes, by the way. yes, yes, as April. Yeah. yeah, and also crushing it as a writer on what we do in the shadows. Yes. Really, I didn't oh, know yeah. that. She's been, a, she's been writing on that show. I think every season since that show started. That's great. Where was within? I can never remember the actress name, but the uh, the AT and T woman. Yes, she is really good in that movie. Yeah, she's so she's great. She's in that really movie. good. I saw, after watching that, I was like, she. Should be, be in more, in more stuff. Things. She should be in more stuff. Yeah. She was supposed to lead a uh, uh, Marvel series. Squirrel yeah. Girl. Yeah, oh, Squirrel, Girl. Squirrel Girl. Yeah. They shot a pilot for that, I think. They oh. did. Yeah. She would have she been great in something like this. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Nathan, what's your pick-me-up? Uh, I would like to pick another Zoomer slasher with some really funny bits and some fantastic kills. I had a really fun time with 2020's Freaky, mm. starring Vince Vaughn and Catherine Newton. Uh, that movie rules. It's really? so fun. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, has me very excited for Scream 7. Yeah, they did uh, Happy Death 
Day as well, yeah, didn't they? Christopher yep. Landon, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Love both of those movies. That Happy Death Day too, dude. What a what a wild. They Back to the Future. It. <laughs> they do. They Back to the Future. It. I still have not seen that one. It's a wild movie, Nathan. Like the first like five minutes, you're like, oh, this is what the movie is. Hell it's yeah. it's it's weird. Love that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's. Yeah. All right. Well, fellas, do we recommend bodies, bodies, bodies? <laughs> yeah, I do. I think it's. I think it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, I, I'd say why not? Mm-hmm. At least once. Yeah, it's 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 a fun little time. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's nothing too original, but you'll probably have fun with it. And like I said, I think Rachel Sennett and Lee Pace alone make this movie worth the ticket price. Yeah. It's definitely a movie that I think I'll revisit in the future, but I also can go quite some time, I think, <laughs> without without it. No, it makes me want to watch the uh, that Lee Pace show, uh, The Foundation. Foundation, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah just because I want to see that. Need to go on a Lee Pace kick now, I think. <laughs> that show, I haven't watched it, but I, I did work on some of it. Mm. It looks stellar. I've heard it's very good. I, yeah. I haven't watched it either. Although, to be honest, I'll probably just go back and rewatch Halt and Catch Fire again. Yes. <laughs> Can I say one th- other thing, too, about Foundation? I mm. haven't watched the show, but Jared Harris is on that show. Mm-hmm. And my old job, we were working on like some of the like the little uh, digital EPK things, like the things you see on like Instagram and TikTok and stuff like that for it. Electronic press kit. <laughs> exactly. Someone knows their abbreviation. Yep. There's, there's, you know, things like, hey, uh, thanks for watching our trailer. Swipe up for more and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Like that you see at the end of videos. Jared Harris could not be bothered to do that stuff. It was the <laughs> funniest fucking thing. Because, like, he he wouldn't even look at the camera. He's like, eh, swipe up for more and, like, kind of flick his finger up. He's like, ah. oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> that's exactly how you would hope he'd be, though. Right? Exactly. Just, like, 20 <laughs> minutes of, like, barely usable footage. And, uh, again, that is not to disparage uh, uh, Jared Harris at all. No, I think it's fucking absolutely. hilarious. What a G. But, yeah, that just, just, just brought back some memories for me. <laughs> that's great. So that's Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. If you haven't already, subscribe to our show Mm -hmm. we are not even halfway i would say technically because there's going to be five entries here Mm. uh in our spooky linings for 2023 for this season and there's much more to come after that so subscribe if you haven't already leave us a rating that takes just a few seconds and does wonders for our show and uh, if you want you can leave us a comment or uh some feedback wherever you're listening to the show right now you can also follow us on uh, twitter instagram tiktok where we post clips from the show and oftentimes some behind the scenes materials and stuff like that and if you haven't already you can check out our reddit our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist that's bodies 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 and next week nathan is your first pick right for spooky linings and you're gonna give us a clue for this movie well i know i was supposed to provide a clue mm-hmm. but i shunt <laughs> oh boy <laughs> i am so excited i have never seen this movie i don't even know what fucking we're doing uh, <laughs> when i saw you put it on the calendar i was thrilled i was overjoyed because I, like, I was planning on watching it and I was like, okay, now a hold. Well, hold, hold, hold those horses. <laughs> I'm disappointed that I know the ending of this movie and I know, I know. what you're referring to, yeah. but I'm excited to see what that looks like. So <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to have a lot to talk about next week. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a trip. We're, we're finally doing it. We're finally doing it. So, uh, anything, any last orders of business uh, before we get out of here, fellas? Well, I'm not as nihilistic as I appear on the internet. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I can say rest in peace, Oatmeal. And David. And David. And Greg. And Emma. And Alice. And Jordan. Jordan. Forgot about Jordan. Is that all of them? I think I got all of them there. And uh, as always, we're all coked out. (laughs) (laughs) Excelsior. 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 Look at us. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters!